Today we're going to start to take a look at the anatomy of the skin. So when we take a look at the skin, this is just a schematic diagram, a simple sketch of what we might see if we were looking at the skin in cross-section. And it would be divided into two primary layers. As you look at this diagram, where do you think the two primary layers begin and end? I'll let you analyze this and see what you think. Corey? Where there's the brown stuff on the top and the purple stuff below it. Okay, the brown stuff on the top and the purple stuff below it. Do you think that that's where the second layer ends? Is that purple stuff? No, that's where the second layer begins. I think that's where the second layer begins. So first layer, second layer. Okay. Any other thoughts? Scott? Um, the first layer is the brown and the purple, and then the second layer is from the purple down to... Tell me what is that. that. That's the first layer. Okay. Then go down. Stop? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Wait, maybe it starts and begins where the, the bottom capillary and, and main stuff is? Like, right below the little squiggly pyramid? I mean, right above the little squiggly pyramid? Yeah. Okay. She's changing your mind. No, don't, be, don't be persuaded so easily. Okay. Well, no, I'm thinking about the brown stuff should be the dead skin cells. And then if you score with that, you get the derivative of skin, which has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Any other thoughts before I guide you in your thinking? <laughs> Normally I don't do this. Normally I just talk, but this is good higher level thinking. Go back to your histology. What do you know about epithelial tissue and the characteristics? The six or five characteristics of epithelial tissue. Is it vascular or avascular? Vascular. A vascular. Apical surface, basal surface. If it's a vascular, can I have a blood supply in it? <laughs> so think about where those first and second layers might begin. And would you like to change your answer? Now I have them stoned. <laughs> You're trying to find the two primary layers of the skin. Epidermis. You don't have to worry about what they're called. You're just analyzing this diagram, trying to find epidermis, dermis. Two primary layers. So I guess my first answer is probably right then. So one's on the top. All right, we'll go with Corey. The epidermis is that first layer of skin where we have no blood supply. Which would be the Right here, okay. the brown. And as you watch the second bracket come in, it's light blue here, that would be our dermis. If you use your medical terminology skills, what does the prefix epa mean? Above. Good job, Jed. Above or upon. So it tells us that our epidermis is above or upon the dermis. What was that yellow stuff beneath the dermis? Subcutaneous stuff. Called the subcutaneous layer. All right, good job. Or the hypodermis. Again, we see a prefix. What does hypo mean? I'm sorry? Lack of. Lack of, insufficient, or below. And in this case, it would mean below. So the hypodermis lies beneath the dermis. Subcutaneous. We know that the suffix O-U-S means 
pertaining to. The prefix sub means below, and cutane are what word? The word root means skin. Good job. So they know some of this. They're they're getting it. And that is everything below our dermis. And in this case, it does happen to be made of fat or adipose tissue. So, we're going to focus on the epidermis here at the beginning of the hour today and take a look at the five sublayers or strata that make it up. Hopefully, you realize that your skin has different thicknesses. Some areas of our body have really thick skin, some areas of our body have thin skin. Where it's thicker, that epidermis consists of five layers. Where it's thinner, it consists of four. Now these diagrams are in your lab. So if you want to pull those out and look at them and analyze them while we're talking here, add notes to them, feel free. It'll make it easier for you to be able to read these words as well. The diagram on the left says stratum corneum, granular layer, spinous layer, basal layer. On the right, it says stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum malpighi, and stratum germinativum, or the basal cell layer, or stratum basal. These actually match. But this is using more of a layman's term. This is using more of a medical term. Stratum corneum matches up term for term. Granular layer matches up with which of these terms here? Stratum granulosum. Yes, so the granular layer is our stratum granulosum. The spinous layer is called the stratum spinosum, which can also be referred to as the stratum malpighi. Okay. And last but not least, the stratum germinatum or stratum basal. Which of the layers is missing in our thinner skin? The stratum lucidum. Good job. It's that easy. Questions before us? It's missing in the thinner skin. The diagram on your left illustrates our thinner skin. The diagram on the right illustrates our thicker skin. We're going to take a look at each of these strata and figure out what they are, what they do, and why they're there. <coughs> The outermost layer, the stratum corneum, consists of dead cells. And we talked about that during histology. That these cells have died because the blood supply and the oxygen and the nutrients that epithelial tissue receives gets there strictly through what process? There's no blood supply there. Osmosis. Osmosis is water. Well, what's the other one? Osmosis. No. You gotta love it when they <laughs> think. Osmosis is a form of. <laughs> Diffusion. Thank you. Mitch said that. Thank you. Diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. It's a passive form of transport. So this blood supply is contained within vessels, capillaries, but it has to diffuse through all of these cells to get here. And by the time it gets there, that tissue is already starting to die. So the stratum corneum, the outermost layer, consists of dead cells. The stratum basal, or germinativum, that innermost single layer of cells, is our 
layer that is growing, rapidly dividing, constantly replacing all these cells that are getting sloughed off through mitosis. Yes, Kate. So the stratum basal is the purple part, or is it the, that black line? Where is it? That black line that it's okay. touching. It's the single innermost layer of cells within the epidermis. You'll see a better, well, I can go back. It's right here. Okay? It's the last layer of cells right there. Okay? You're going to see it on the next slide as well. When you look at the word germinativum and you use your medical terminology skills again to divide and conquer, suffix um tells us that it is what? It's a tissue. It's a tissue. You bet. And the word root, germinate, means? Think of a seed. To grow. To grow. It's a tissue that's growing. It's a tissue that is making new cells, actively reproducing and dividing to replace the cells that are getting sloughed off. Does anyone need more time? So we've got the outside layer, we've got the inside layer, and now we're going to keep on talking about that inside layer. Because when you look back here, we see hair, we see sweat glands. Those are all down in the dermis. However, they're actually derivatives of the stratum germinativum. When I say that they're derivatives, do you know what I mean? They're derived from. They're derived from, but we're using that word to define itself. So what do you mean by they're derived from, Jordan? They come off of. They're made by. They're produced by the stratum germinativum. When we start to take a look at the anatomy in lab, this row of cells will actually invaginate into the dermis and go around that hair follicle. So hair, sweat glands, sebaceous glands, etc. actually come from the epidermis. Okay. So this is all part of the stratum basal? Basal or germinative. Yep. Stratum basal is the same synonymous term to the stratum germinative. They're in a, interchangeable. So they're coming off of the stratum basal. Or did you say that louder, Kate? They're coming off of the stratum basal? They're not coming off of. Okay. They are being okay. produced by. Okay the stratum germinatum. Those epithelial cells are actually creating these structures. And now we have the three layers in between. The stratum lucidum, which we're missing on this diagram, and the stratum granulosum are actually a transitional zone between my living and dead cells. They are just starting to die. Okay? We've got my brand new cells that have been created here. We've got my dead cells here. And we're starting to, to transition. We're starting to die. So they go together? The stratum lucidum and the Yep, the stratum lucidum and the stratum granulosum. It's just a transition zone. So the stratum corneum and the stratum lucidum are pretty much all dead cells. Stratum granulosum is starting to die. Some might be alive. Okay. And you can see that structurally they're starting to change. The stratum lucidum, they're translucent. See how they have it drawn? can't really see them. They're see-through cells. And then that stratum spinosum or stratum malpighi, which is also called the prickle layer, 
is where we find all of our medical or pathological conditions. It's where we find our, a lot of our skin cancers. It's where we find our cellulitis, psoriasis, all of the signs and symptoms of skin conditions that we'll be looking at in your glossary of your midterm book. So at this point, I typically stop with you and have you now transition into lab where you start to take a look at these structures in the microscopes. And before we do that, still need that? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. 